any car, right? I, I, I really appreciate what like engines have and like how they sound. And I just, I just, nothing, uh, nothing else gets me riled up like race cars do. Motorcycles do, but it's, it's pretty much, it's in the same neighborhood of sport. Welcome back to the Track of the Podcast presented by Formula Addict. I'm your host, Wish, with my co-host, Henny. We are here in Toronto at the Honda Indy Toronto race with our favorite personality on the grid, a uh, person who has won the Indy Lights competition in 2018, is now a driver for Aero McLaren. Welcome, Pat O'Rourke. Oh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, <laughs> great start. Yeah, great start. No, thanks for the invitation. Um, always happy to be back in Toronto. Um, Wonderful places to eat. Yeah, you guys are from, from Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You live yeah. downtown. Downtown. Yeah. Yep. Toronto. Yeah, has a lot of uh, cool places, places to eat. But the road that you guys are actually driving on is the same road that we would drive on too. <laughs> like sure. So, so that's probably why there's some more traffic. And bumpy. Yeah, that's what we. Yeah, drive. because there's. Oh, mate! Around. Don't even get me started with the bumps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's bad. Is it as bad as Detroit? Though? Well, we'll take that. No, okay, we'll take that. We're yeah. better than yeah. Detroit. <laughs> anyway, well, we have a few questions for you, Pat, and then we're going to do a rapid fire round to end things off. Ah, I, I think it. you're going to be pretty good at that. Um, first question, though, I wanted to know off the track, like, what are some of your current obsessions? Things that you're just really fascinated by right now. So I am fascinated by. So I I love real estate. Okay. I I, I love architecture. Um, I think if I was in a racing driver, and if I was in racing something else, like a like motocross or supercross, yeah. I'd be probably an architect. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I like, I'm a big fan of, um, of just, you know, a lot of like the woodwork and all that stuff. Um, so I like that. Um, I'm not very good at any other sport. Mm -hmm. I like to play pickleball with my friends. <sighs> It's not a sport. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm Bro, it is, <laughs> if you play 1v1, yeah. here's you my argument. Gas here's my argument. argument. Here's my argument. Name one pickleball professional. Oh, I don't know. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I know, I know. But it's a start. Yeah. No, I know, it's no. a start. It's a start. Everybody's picking it up. Yep. Uh -huh. and that's going to make people watch, yeah. right? It's not as easy to pick up like a race car and go sure. drive, right? So. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I enjoy doing that. Uh, I'm trying to pick up golf. Not very good. It's a tough sport. Um, I've had to. I've, I've had the chance to play in some some beautiful golf courses. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is in Mexico, actually. Cool. And um, yeah, yeah. Flew, flew over a lot of balls into the ocean. <laughs> oh, <laughs> into the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> there's this. Oh, there's just this ass, yeah. awesome hole. Yeah. And um, and. Obviously, the only way to get there is to throw it over the ocean. And it's basically like a little island. Yeah. And um, that's when I quit. I'm like, oh, no, I got it over. <laughs> Ball number eight. Oh, dang. I had to use the driver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to get it. But it worked. <laughs> I love that. That's what counts. Oh. I took a picture there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. What does, what does a day to day life look like on a race weekend for you? As you race up, weekend. Yeah. Well, they're all different. Yeah. So, Toronto is actually one of the busiest. Well, actually. Everything is not busy compared to Indy, but um, it is one of the one of the ones where partners like to come because it's a I mean it's a beautiful city it's it's a pretty big market for for Arrow mm -hmm. um, and um, and so we've got you know the the expected right we've got an appearance usually after a qualifying day which is on Saturday um, we've got you know stuff like this yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, beforehand. Yeah. But um, but I, I think it's pretty chill. Like we're done every day at like six. The worst, the worst is when we when we're done at the track at like eight, mm -hmm. and then it's like go to an appearance from nine to nine thirty to have you uh, right now. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I have no complaints. Right. And then well, what about challenges? Like, what are some of the kind of biggest challenges that you face going through Indy? Like, since being a rookie all the way now, like, what are some of those core challenges that you look back on that you're proud of overcoming? Hmm. I think the first challenge is uh, deliver, mm. right, and and earn your spot, earn your place, mm -hmm. and uh, I've done that. 
um, as, as a lot of other guys have. And then it's about obviously trying to, to get those championships, to get those wins, uh, get those 500 wins. But um, uh, I think one thing is to make it to IndyCar and another thing is to stay right. and, um, and to actually make it a job. Mm-hmm. It's, there's a, not a misconception, but it's, there's a big difference from one to the other. Yeah. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest goal. Obviously, everything else, like pit stops and in and out laps, all that comes with experience. Mm-hmm. You, know, and you don't really come prepared for that because you know, the, the younger series don't have that. Um, so that's just something that you learn race by race. Yeah. And we know you like boxing. So how does that training regimen turn into India? How do you even prepare to use that as a skill? Uh, so it's, it's just it's, it's great cardio. Yeah. Um, we can't be very big. So a lot of my training is weights. Mm-hmm. But then incorporating a lot of like high intensity hit, mm-hmm. um, one of those being boxing, uh, so it keeps you nice and lean, um, and it's just it's fun. It's great. It's a great workout. Um, I enjoy it, and you feel great afterwards. Oh, yeah. uh, but I don't like to spar. I like to hit 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 in the face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Penny loves sparring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love boxing. No black eyes yet. No, no, no. I'm, I'm quite quick. You're chilling. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I love that. <laughs> and then, were you always meant to be a driver, Tyler? Like, tell us, like, growing up, was that the goal when you were five, six years old, is I'm going to be a racing car driver? Or was there something else in the background, too, that you were like, oh, maybe that? No, no. Yeah. Like, I, I've always been, I'm a massive car nut. There never right. be race cars. Like, just any car, right? I, I, I really appreciate what, like, engines have and, like, how they sound. And I just, I just, nothing, uh, nothing else gets me riled up like race cars do. Motorcycles do, but it's, it's pretty much, it's in the same neighborhood of sport, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not a race car, it's a bike, but you're still driving or not driving and riding it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's, I think there's so many similarities from one to the other, because I grew up doing all these things like uh, dirt bikes, go-karts. I went the go-kart route. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely, it really is the only thing in my life where it, like, it was just so easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, that's for me, yeah. you know? And, and to tell us a moment where throughout your career, you said, I screwed up, like, whether it's a race or a moment, and how do you even mentally overcome that? Oh, bro, <laughs> I've had so many, too many to count. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, over the years, you realize that, you, you shouldn't regret those because that ulti- that ultimately just makes you stronger. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, it's bad news for your competitors, right? So I don't really see that as being a bad thing. They're annoying, yeah. but you make sure you don't do them again. And and when it really becomes that, you know, that, that, that polished diamond that you want to get to, mm-hmm. you're also going to be unbeatable. Yeah, right. And then in 2021, you have made a bet with Zach Brown. You know, if you want an Indy car race, they put you into the McLaren F1 car. I think yeah. we've all seen the YouTube video. And how giddy and excited you were, I think, was amazing. Yeah. It took away, like, you were enthusiastic. You came out of the car, you are like, the grip, the grip, the grip was so good. And it was so different. Like, is that something you want to start doing more often? Like, even past Indy, starting to drive other vehicles and doing stuff like that? Uh, it's yeah. It was my, not my first, my first time driving a Formula 1 car was uh, when I was part of, uh, part of Red Bull. Mm. Um, but it was a very, it's a very different era, very different engine, a lot of less grip, less aero. So when I got into the into the McLaren F1 car, it was in, at the end of twenty one in Abu Dhabi. Um, but like just the first thing that made my eyes pop was just how how good it did everything. Like how good it like the change of direction was. Like, I mean, my, my, the, the size of my smile inside of the helmet because. <laughs> You know Abu Dhabi, right? It's a it's a left and mm-hmm. then it's a left right flat. Yep. Uh, it's blind, mm-hmm. but it's it's flat out. Mm-hmm. And um, and before I went out, you kind of like go out. And in F one, you you have the tire blankets, mm-hmm. so the first out lap is super super slow, and then your flyers Quick. obviously super yep. fast. Yep. So the difference of speed is big. Right. And for my first five, I was like. I better, I better do it flat. If yeah, I don't do it flat. I'm a wuss. And um, and and I remember going through that section. And before I was even thinking of going right, my muscle, 
had already like gone right. right. And I was just like, oh my God, I've never felt something like that in my life. Just how the change of direction on that thing was with the speed that you're carrying. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah, like and in indie car you smash the brake and it's I mean the car stops, yeah. but it, you gotta smash the brake. And then so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna smash it like halfway through in the uh, than what I'm doing in the indie car. Yeah. And I wasn't prepared for the stopping force, it was like <laughs> yeah, like yeah, my yeah. head just yeah. like like you see the ball you see your legs. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh it's just they're amazing. You're dead the padding also to your neck, I'm guessing. By the end of the day, yeah, so yeah, but they do, they don't really do anything because the 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 head pad is it flexes. Yeah. So the G's are so strong that even if you're leaning on it, you're yep. still like you're still dipping into the headrest. Mm -hmm. So they don't really do anything. Right. Um. So that was a work in progress. Yeah. 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 Is you just so you know though, a lot of F1 drivers, I think they look at Indy the same way too, where they look at what you guys are doing at Indy 500, for example, yep. the speeds you guys are going at. One small mistake and bam, you're in the wall. And they're like, no, we can't, we can't do, that. do that. We can't <laughs> do that. So it's pretty well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think once you do it once, yeah. you learn how to appreciate this, that like different art of yeah. racing. Um, it's hard to grasp it from just watching. But once you experience it once and you kind of get the hang of it, yeah. I've really learned how to love ovals yeah. uh, and oval racing. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Safer? No. Um, is it fun? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a massive following, and it's continuing to grow. What do you think F Indie Series needs to do to mimic whether it's even F one or just other motorsports to grow and become a social mm -hmm. global audience? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm kind of stuck now. I, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't jumped up as much as I want to. Mm -hmm. So we gotta. Gotta bump that up. Still the face. But, uh, <laughs> look, man, I. If we want to be bigger, we need to be thinking outside of the box that we've been thinking of the last decade. Mm -hmm. And the first step to that is going international. We don't have to do what F1 is doing, yeah. that they're legit going everywhere. Mm -hmm. But for starters, they have a Mexican driver being me, mm -hmm. and I've done enough for it to be a sold out event. And I know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sell it out. Mm -hmm. um, so Mexican race. Yep. We have Canapino in the series. Mm -hmm. We need to go to Argentina. Yep. They did a freaking show run. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There were more people there for yeah. a show run than there were at 40, 50 percent of the IndyCar races. Mm -hmm. um, we need to go to Brazil. Mm -hmm. Still take advantage of Elio is present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very famous. Brazil, you know, he's got, he's won 500 four times and like he's still in series. We need to go to Brazil. Um, I said it years ago that we need to get, take advantage of Sato still in the series. Yep. Uh, he's kind of not so much as he has in the, in the last few years, but Japan, yep. like Japan's got great fans. Yep. Um, and series has a J Japanese following. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, there's a there's Palau. Palau is Spaniard. Like mm -hmm. we can, we can have a race in Europe. Mm -hmm. McLaren coming into the into the series. We have a massive UK following. Like there's so many like green flags inviting us to go, and I don't I don't see what the weight up is. Like mm -hmm. I'm still very young. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of uh, mu as much experience as obviously everybody that's leading the series. But if I've learned something, is that you're never quite ready to do it until you do, do it. it. Right. Yeah. So, take that leap. Yeah. yeah. So you you need to you need to take you like we've already got like a foot in in all those markets. Yep. But it's oh you know are we not ready? Just do it. Yeah. It's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think that is a big part to to grow in the yeah. series and because there's so much interest mm -hmm. in the series like there's so many high profile drivers interested coming to the series. Mm -hmm. But what we need is to we need to see what is what is happening in Formula One is the series grows and it takes the drivers with them. Yes. We need the series to be globally known. Mm -hmm. And it'll just it'll elevate everybody within the series. Yeah. Um, and driven by the profile of the people. Exactly. Within, so exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean it's a, it's a very different way of how you know they do things compared to Formula One. Like mm -hmm. the access is yeah, it's 
I mean, it's pretty much limitless, oh, yeah. right? For an extremely small price compared to Formula One. Right. And uh, like for Formula One, you got to sell your liver and yeah, <laughs> yeah, in a hand. Yeah, and yeah, you have to get a pattern pass in a hot lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and but the the um, the demand is there. Yeah. And yeah. people are paying that. Yeah. So you know the demand is there in the country where you are mostly racing at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there, there is there is something missing because we don't have that. Yeah. Right. So there's obviously something that we gotta that we gotta explore. Yeah. Um, I think we have a good idea where it's at, but we just we gotta we gotta keep on pushing through and and realize that maybe we won't see it um, we won't see the the return maybe on investment right now. Yeah. But over the next like what we want is the series to be alive for the next. Like, yeah. It'll pay long term. Dinner. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't look at it as oh what's gonna happen one and two years. No, you mm -hmm. look at it in 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Like you you want to get like why. Why is there a limit to where we want to go as a series? Because the racing product isn't better anywhere else. Yeah. So um, I just think that a lot of the formula is there to make it happen. We just yep. uh, no one's going to gift it to us. Yeah. We need to. Well said. We need to all work together. Yeah. Well said. Out of president. Ooh. Out of president, guys. <laughs> I love that. I love it. But this was great. We're going to get right into the rapid fire yeah. round and close things out. But stay tuned, guys, because the rapid fire round should be pretty spicy. The Pato Award. Welcome back to the Track Winners Podcast. We are, oh, hello. That's <laughs> my phone. We're here with Pat Ward, and uh, we're going to go into the rapid fire round now. Pat, are you nervous? No. Oh, no. Oh, it's, 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 Why would I be nervous? Yeah, I'm like a little bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm kind of scared. Now I'm not I'm nervous. nervous. <laughs> we got to change our questions. Up. We got to make it hard. All right, here we go. Rapid full of fire, sir. If you had to choose one track or one Grand Prix to race on forever, the rest of your life, only one track, which one would it be? IndyCar? Yeah. Birmingham, Alabama. Perfect. Nice. You kind of answered this earlier, but if you didn't do any kind of racing, what other sport would you do for the rest of your life? Profession. Yeah. Supercross. Cool. Or motocross. Yeah. What's the funniest or maybe like the most embarrassing moment you've had in a race weekend? <laughs> like something that just brings back chuckles. Oh man, it had to be my F2 weekend in Austria where. Um, yeah, it had to be that weekend. I'm not going to go into details. Oh. Was, was, oh, I mean, do you want me to go yeah, that? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just I wasn't aware of the Pirelli tire and how it worked. And um, I, I finished last for like 50 seconds. Oh. I mean, I mean, ridiculous yeah, amounts. Yeah, yeah. And it was just because I wasn't aware of, of, of what that what happens to that tire. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> take care of it. And I just burned through it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. And uh, so I was pretty bad. But then the next day, I, I recovered well. Nice. What's one piece of memorabilia you like to own or currently own? I would like to. I would like to own my Indy Lights championship winning car. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, flying, so I don't have to go to airports. Yeah. <laughs> I, airports as well. I like trains actually way more. Yeah, but in America, so they're, they're terrible. terrible. Yeah, they don't go that far. No, they need to take out a page out of like Japan's book. Yeah, or even Europe will do. Yeah, they would. It would make so many airlines go broke. Yeah, <laughs> they're not, they're not gonna do it. <laughs> oh, that's actually true. What's the most over asked question that you get? Other than that, we're going to a phone call. Hey, we didn't ask that. Yeah, we, we did, did not ask that. Done. Best part of it. If you could have only one food or one cuisine for the rest of your life, Mexican. Mexican. Ah, interesting. We heard that you love sushi. I love sushi. Okay. Um, not a fan of uh, Japanese breakfasts. Oh, okay. So Mexican takes the cake. Okay. If you could switch lives with anyone and spend a full day, who would it be? Probably some like entrepreneur, like, oh, um. See, he wasn't ready. Elon Musk. Let's go there. Like Mark Cuban or something? Okay. Like and what's your guilty pleasure when it comes to TV? What TV show are you like? <laughs> binging? What am I binging? Uh, I'm not binging anything right yeah. now. I don't watch a lot of TV. I like to be outside. Cool. Um, the last one that I did binge watch was um, I watched. They weren't really series, but the Iron Man movies. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I love those movies. Uh, big Marvel fans here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> If you're stranded on an island, what three drivers would you have with you? Felix, okay. 
Rossi. Nice, because I think we're such a good couple. Like, I think you've got a little bit of like every aspect. Like, yeah. none of us are yeah. the same. Personality for yes. yeah, Um And and TK, I just feel like we yeah, have yeah. so much fun. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Felix, Alex, and TK. All right. And final thing, I don't know. You're in Canada. Have you ever had Tim Hortons and Tim Bits before? They're donuts. Yeah, like mm-hmm. mini donuts. small Tim Bits. So no, I have not. Would you like one? We have. We've got a twenty pack just for you. You have a choice. If you want a little bit, <laughs> you may pick whichever one you want here. Do it. This is a true Canadian moment. That's why we need a G tip. Yeah, grab whichever one you want. So I'm gonna go dark. Yes. yes. Chocolate. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Canadian. You're I'm not Canadian. Okay. I don't even want to know the amount of calories in my No. Mm-hmm. You'll burn it through boxing. It's okay. <laughs> Canadians have been living off this for many years. You know, we're fine. Very wonderful. Yeah. Well, we got approval. Can you do the outro? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for attending another episode of Track With Notes. We had an amazing Pat Award. Good luck this weekend. We're rooting for a win. Uh, and we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. Thank oh. you, guys. Appreciate it. Very fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.